Bonjour, Bonjour YouTube, welcome back to our channel. Today we're in Vagnon and it is? It's a very small town, literally right next to Ile de France region. But it's in we the are, Normandy. Yeah, we are in Normandy now. It's like a border between Normandy and Ile de France region. Yeah, so? On y va? On y va. So because early morning we couldn't get any food, Sinan is eating. He hates when I record him when he's eating. So after we are done with food, we're gonna go and we're gonna explore Dordogne. Dordogne? We're not in Dordogne, we're in Vernon. <laughs> we are hoping to make it also to a Chateau de Bizy. We'll see yeah. if they are not busy. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> there were so many people going to Giverny. It's right next door, literally. But Vernon is also very impressionist. Like everything is about Monet in here. When you go to like stores with like tourism stuff and everything, they keep on selling like all the stuff related to him. So this is Tour des Archives, or the Tower of Archives, and this used to be a chateau, this used to be a castle. As you can see, there is only dungeon left, and then a little bit of the wall, the protective wall. This was actually built uh, during Philippe Auguste, and the reason why it was built is because Vernon, until then, didn't have any protective chateau. It didn't have any chateau that would protect the actual town. Unfortunately, the tower is closed today. It's only open uh, for the uh, Journée de Patrimoine, so it's a, it's a day of heritage, yeah. But, but, um, you can still view it outside. So we are just standing right in front of the old mill, Melun. Back in medieval ages, this place had a very strategic point. As you can see, this old mill is built on a bridge. Unfortunately, the bridge was destroyed, bombarded during the Second World War. In 1930s, this old mill was bought by an American, but shortly after, it was abandoned. Hence why in 1980s, the municipality got involved. They just started renovating the old mill. Now you can see how it is at the moment and unfortunately there is a construction going on that's why we cannot get closer other than this and right next to the mill you've got the chateau de tournelle which basically served as a protective point for the actual bridge you can see the towers are disproportionately thick compared to the building but in the end it looks amazing it still looks beautiful you cannot go inside but but it's a beautiful structure nonetheless. Imagine how cool that would be to live over here and in your front yard, you've got the chateau. I think it's absolutely cool. It's so amazing. So just like in Ahas, we're witnessing a wedding and it's right there. <laughs> and of course, you've got the mairie, so they're doing the ceremony there. And before that, they were in this church right across. Collégial Notre-Dame de Vernon. The construction started in the 11th century and then it continued all the way into the 16th century. Between 15th and 16th century was the main um, construction of the nave. The choir of the, of the building was built earlier and the nave was built much later. In 20th century, the building suffered a lot of destruction in terms of the windows. The windows were all blown out during the bombardments. So therefore, the windows inside now you will see, majority of them are contemporary. They were done in the 50s and 60s, and at the same time in the 90s, the works were completed. Some of the windows that remained, but they're not here, they've been moved to Notre Dame de Lourdes. So we're done with the Centre-Ville of Vernon, and now we are trying to get to, we're walking to Chateau de Bizy. We hope it's not busy, because we really want to visit. And, and, some of you may ask, why did we not go to Giverny? Well, it's simple because Giverny is very busy full of people when we arrived there was a queue for like three hours or something in front of us there were so many people yes so we decided that Giverny will be on a separate trip definitely we're gonna come here and dedicate a full day just to Giverny definitely. otherwise it's just simply impossible you know it's really not possible for us to come here now and go to ah oh, look at this there's a train it's so cute look at this 
So yeah, so this is the train that we're gonna take next time. <laughs> So we've been walking for about 15 minutes already and we're not done yet. It's really hot but this area is very residential and the buildings are so pretty. Some of the houses are like 19th century houses and they're stunning. And then you can see like an occasional modern building that's extremely ugly but that's the reality. Yeah. It's always like that, I don't know why. But yeah, we're not there yet, we're still walking. And this is why I believe people should be planting more trees because look at this behind me. This is beautiful. This is just a little sidewalk of the boulevard but you've got trees planted next to each other. Of course there are cars on the side. Sorry for the sound, for the noise. But look how stunning this is. And it's just a little line of light and it's just so beautiful here. It's hot today but thanks to the trees you feel a million times better. It's just stunning. More trees, better life. <laughs> the chateau that you see here, it's a second building. The previous one existed until the revolution. It was taken apart for the pierre, for the stones. Yeah, for and the building there, right there, that building, the tall one, that building was built later on in the 19th century yeah. when Louis XVIII was in power. Apparently, one of the owners, early owners of the chateau was the grandson of Uke, who was the owner of Volevecomte, the one that we showed you last year, or no, two years ago, it's been already two yeah, years. It's been two years. Mm -hmm. uh, for that you can see this episode above and uh, so the grandson got this chateau and started developing and all of that if you look at the current family that owns it if you look at the family tree that they show you at the end of the visit <laughs> it actually great. leads back to Bonaparte family Napoleon's family the chateau itself when you go there they give you this incredible amount of information you go from room to room to room and yeah, there are several rooms and each room of yeah. course has its own history there was a part in the last one one of the last rooms the wooden rooms what is crazy is that when the germans Sorry. were occupying france they occupied this place of course and what happened was they actually used some of the pieces to keep themselves warm but i, I was so shocked you take historic things and you just use it to I guess that's the thing with wars, you know, they don't really care. I was shocked to see how Fouquet was connected. Yeah. I mean, okay, we visited the chateau in Volvicomte yeah. and I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Because Fouquet was imprisoned. imprisoned. Yes, and his grandson was and actually quite successful, which is great. It's good for him. But yeah. I was a bit shocked. I'm like, what? How? <laughs> it's interesting. Apparently, when the grandson came to be, uh, you know, came to be uh, of an adult age and he became like successful he restored the name of the family at least that's what the guide told us but overall overall we are now walking around the garden the garden is huge it's divided into several parts there is the english garden which is where we're walking right now there was the french garden before they and are italian. not in the italian one yeah at the entrance yeah. and they are not using a lot of gardeners they only have two gardeners apparently that's why you don't see a lot of flowers. It's mainly trees. The trees are magnificent. Yeah. But the yeah, the chateau is insane. Like it's not so big. I mean, <laughs> it kind of like blows your mind, you know, because because when you when you hear all this story, you're like, "Oh my goodness, this is really this is really yeah. crazy. This is crazy." Yeah, it reminds me of Fontainebleau because in Fontainebleau you can also see different eras yeah and here is the same yeah in a way yes since it changed so much on a smaller changed, scale yeah. yes overall I would say if you come to Vernon you should visit the chateau it's very interesting and it's very pretty it's only nine euros to go in mm -hmm. and uh, the, but it's a guided tour yes, I got so it's nice tour. it's actually nice to get a lot of information yeah. just for nine euros it's fantastic that's it for today we hope you like this episode if you like please don't forget to like share and comment below and subscribe we hope that you like Vernon and uh, we'll see you in the next episode
until then. Au revoir. Au revoir. Ah, and before we finish, before we finish, one more thing. So, in Vernon, there is this amazing boulangerie that we found by accident today. Literally, I'm not joking. The bread is the best bread we've had in years. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's absolutely stunning. So we're gonna find you the name. We're gonna put it down in our description. In case you come to Vernon, you have to <laughs> try something from them. Yeah. Either the bread or pastry or whatever. But you have to try it. It was one of the best boulangeries I ever come to. Ever. Yes. Ever. It's Literally amazing. It was so good. Yeah. So make sure to check it out. Yeah. Okay. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>